Hey everybody, good morning, Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates. Today is Thursday, it's the 11th of June, 2020. We're getting closer to Father's Day. It's been a pretty decent week here overall. Did not get a whole bunch of crazy storms and flooding from Cristobal, but I understand that it was a little bit worse further north, like Chicago area got hammered pretty bad and there were some tornadoes and such, but we lucked out here in Northeast Arkansas. Right now it is about 76 degrees. It's high pressure, bluebird skies. And I've got a few pieces to show you this morning. And I've got a couple of cool things. We're gonna start out with this piece right here. This is an Atlantic mackerel that's going out to Steve and Luis on one of those 120s. Very cool, reflective. But the reason that I'm showing you these is because of how I did the mackerel lines. Now, I don't have any stencils for mackerel. I, I do saltwater repaints and I do pretty much anything. I'm open to any pattern just to learn how to become a better airbrusher. But for this, I wanted to goof around with what's called, and I don't know if you guys have used them, I know that there's a few of you out there that have that kind of cross over from the art world and uh, like the really intense uh, anime and stuff like that into this type of artwork and airbrushing. So if you've never seen these before, let me introduce you to painters. This is water-based acrylic ink and it comes in various uh, thicknesses, almost like you would find um, some of the, like the graph artists, graffiti artists that work out of the rattle cans, the Montanas. So they come with fatness tips, um, smaller tips, fine tips, and it's similar, but way cooler to the stuff that I use every day to sign. These are also acrylic ink, water-based. So they go from this thickness, which is a super fine tip. Sorry for the little, so from that straight through to something that's about like that. And they're real good if you want to do some quick detailing, if you don't feel confident with a, a paintbrush, a real fine detailing art paintbrush, but you want to goof around with something like this. Now this obviously is a mackerel pattern, the blue and white, and then it's got those dark stripes. And I was able to do that with these. So if you want to put the dots, like let's say you don't have stencils that look like the creature feature. Um, if you don't have those and you want to put in some freestyle dots on some of your work, like this, which we're going to talk about in a minute going to Alexia. Been naming the, and this also is, um, is this stuff as well, these paints, the, the paint pens. Um, you can add a little bit of detailing fairly inexpensively. Um, these pens cost about two bucks a piece. Uh, you can get a set of painters for about $4.98 or $5 at Walmart. I got the fluorescents only because I like to accent a lot of stuff with fluorescents and they're made right here in the United States, um, which is also pretty awesome. So they are an, an Elmer's product, but there's a lot of really good ones that Pro artists use these Amsterdams are a little bit more expensive, but if you want to get into goofing around with detailing, and it does take epoxy extremely well, it's just like a thicker version uh, and more precise version for detailing as your airbrush paints. So give them a shot. If you guys are interested in seeing me do a detailing video and a spray session or a tips and tricks, on paint pens and how to use them and maybe what kind of format you'd use them on. I'm thinking craws right away because you know I love the craws. Um, that's something that you guys can do. Um, so if you don't have stuff like these creature feature stencils that I'm kind of showing off on this um, this Bama craw that's going out this morning to Matt Small along with this little guy right here then yeah you can you can really do some cool stuff with with these painters pens so that's a quick tip if you want to see me do them like start to finish on a detailing project let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to make that happen for you guys so staying in tradition with these two pieces right here um, 
this is the Bama Craw, and it's got those really cool eyes on it. And this is the Copper Craw. And the Copper Craw has gotten way shinier over time because I'm now using a couple of different, like I'm kind of moving away from the Createx and I'm going into some of the little higher end, like Spectratex is super thin, but it's really glittery. Um, also, I like the Jacquard. Uh, there's a gold that they put out that's beautiful, but it's real hard to mix. Like the, the paint and the glitter has a tendency to settle towards the bottom of the, the bottle, and it's, it's a bit of a beast to mix up. But when you have it mixed up, um, man, that gold just comes through. So this is that Copper Craw. You guys have already seen this um, Atlantic Mackerel for Steven. And I wanted to show you guys the finished versions of the Alexia's. And I'm really, you know, I'm thinking about putting this as a 2020 pattern um, overall on the website because you guys have just been asking and asking and asking for these. So I'm going to start producing these. Um, the response has been overwhelming. So Alexia, awesome pattern, kiddo. Um, you got yourself a, a consistent one, and it looks like we're going to be doing some of these. So I, I told the family, I told Brian and Deb and, and uh, Alexia's parents that she's going to be getting these, and I am so happy to just send them to her. And he was sweet. He's like, you know, what what kind of compensation do you need? And and it, it's a it's a young lady, so nothing, nothing, you guys. Um, I'm happy to do that for y'all. No problem. These eyes right here, I have... I have not found them again, but I got sent these, I think, in a package of blanks last year. And they are so cool for bluegill and smallmouth. They're half red, half gold, and I've, I haven't, so if you guys know where I can get these, leave me a comment for that, because I'm looking for them. These are awesome, and they're inexpensive. They're the same as this particular one. You get a pack of them for, like, a pack of 100 for, like, three bucks. But I got sent these in a package of blanks at some point so I don't know if you guys are using them and you've seen them or if you haven't just let us know and that's pretty much it except for for the first time in five years I'm confounded folks I am absolutely confounded this thing has started clogging continuously now before you leave comments let me tell you what I have done uh, and I can I can tell you this just from from experience I know how to break this thing down and put it back together as well as I knew my M16 A3 in basic training in the army um, I've drilled this into my head I've read all the tutorials I have watched Airbrush Asylum and I've watched the Megastore and Awada and everybody that has done anything in the way of tutorials on how to break this down but folks Maybe it's something as simple as just replacing the O-ring, um, but I just recently replaced the O-ring. It's clogging on me, and it's like, it's not even, I know how to clean it. I clean it very well. I can do alcohol dips. I know how to uh, take the tip of this off, even down to, now the, the nifty thing about these uh, eclipses right here is that this particular piece comes off unscrews from the, the rest of this nozzle head so that can come apart as well um, I know how to get clogs out of this piece I know how to properly clean these three holes that are inside here that help shoot the air and you can see that in here there's three holes but I mean it's it's been clogging every single time I add paint and it's not it makes no difference if it's reduced paint if it's not reduced paint um, I'm also aware that you can blow clogs out if you're running pressure just by pulling this back I'm also well aware of how to properly spray and the, here's a tip for you guys if, if you weren't aware the proper way to actually bring paint out of your airbrush your air is going to turn on as soon as you press this trigger and as you pull it down paint comes out but if you don't reset this thing before you pull up it's gonna lodge paint up here so I'm aware of that as well I know how to I know how to make the paint stop before I pull back up on the trigger or push up release the trigger 
So I've never, I mean, and I, I've not re had to rebuild these. I haven't had any issues with them, but for the first time, and I don't know if it's just like a little micro hair, but you guys can see that that's clean as a whistle. Everything is clean as a whistle, and it's still clogging every single time. So if you guys have anything that maybe I'm missing or I haven't thought of, um, I need this because this is my bread and butter. And um, it would be an absolute pain that I cannot afford to spend another 170 without tax on one of these. Um, if I do that, then I might as well just go with the Micron that's like $400. So these are good units. I've never had a problem with it like this before, ever. Um, there is paint coming out. It's not an issue anywhere else down here in, in the gun. Um, I know how to take this apart. I know how to pull this through the front and not the back. I, ah, I'm just at a loss, folks. I have no idea what is going on with this airbrush. So if you have a comment or maybe I haven't thought of something that I've just been rambling on for the last couple of minutes, please let me know. Um, because work cannot come to a halt after the last couple of months that we've all been through. <laughs> So help, help, help. This is this is Jenny's cry for help. And uh, I know that there's a lot of brilliant airbrushers out there that are going to have slews of comments for me and I will read them all. And I will think of them as constructive criticism. You guys have a fantastic day. Um, we will get through this. It's not going to get me down. Um, but ah. <laughs> I'll see you on the next video. You guys have a great day. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.